Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Three Minutes of Tehillim. We are up to Perak Chav Tes, Psalm 29. Mizmor le David, Habu la Hashem b'nei Elim, Habu la Hashem kavob ba'oz. We are probably familiar with this Friday night. Mizmor le David. We sing this on uh, Friday night, but there's an added connection between this Mizmor and Shabbos. Because the Gemara in Brachos, Dav Chav Tes, tells us that there are seven brachos that we say in the Shemona Esrei on Shabbos. And the seven brachos that we say in the Shemona Esrei, usually we have 18. I guess we shouldn't call it the Shemona Esrei. The 18 blessings of the Shemona Esrei are 18. And then during on Shabbos, the Amida consists of seven brachos. And the seven are corresponding to this parak. Interesting, it's Daf Chavtes in brachos, Perak Chavtes in Tehillim, I don't know. But it says that the seven uh, blessings on the, in the Shabbos are, correspond to the seven kolos. The seven times we're in Mizmul David, it says the word kol, kol Hashem al Hamoyim, kol Hashem ba Koa, kol Hashem ba Hadar, etc., etc. So what is this? The Gemara doesn't say much else. What does that mean? Also, it happens to be that Shabbos is the seventh day. What exactly does this mean? So seven, as we know, many of the Mefarshim say the Maral and in Kabbalistic the mysticism, seven is sort of the complete natural world, and then eight is beyond. Right. So what does this mean? The natural world and what is going on in this parrot that has to do with Shabbos? So, Rav Cook has a comment in his Siddur in Ola Sri'iyah, where he says that in general, when you look at the Bria, when you look at the world, he says, Kol ikra nira akiyum. When you want to define or see the splendor of the world, you would assume that if you look at the Bria, and it's all of its beauty is seen when it is functioning properly. However, when you look at this parak, it's talking about all the destruction and the, the God's uh, you know, powerful voice can break things. And he says, however, if you think about it, you can see the the, mitzias, the the existence, the value of existence, even in its destruction. And he says the same thing would, is true for a human being. You would think that a human being, to look at the splendor and the beauty and the majesty of a human being, you could look at them when they're successful, when they're productive, when they're creating things. But what is Shabbos? Shabbos is a time where we step back and we are acting not as man as creator, but man as being. And that's basically the, the, the pivot that we take when we move into Shabbos. We move from man as creator to man as being. And that's really what Shabbos is about. It's Hashem was creating the world, but then took a step back and became ju- just the existence. And there was a Shabbos. And the beauty of Shabbos is to experience really just the being itself, just existence itself, which is really an amazing thing. And that, if you contemplate that, you think about what Shabbos is and what it, what it, is, what it represents, it represents the equality of a human being and touching that, that divinity in just the experience of existence. So that perhaps is what we're doing. It's not just a lack of malacha on Shabbos. We're actually becoming more in touch with the real goal of creation itself as creation was there only for the purpose of the seventh day, which was Shabbos, the creation itself was there as a, a function of preparing for the Shabbos, which Shabbos is just the, the experience of Kirves Elohim Hitov, the experience of godliness, the experience of union with the divinity, and that's where the pinnacle of both the creation and of the human being is found.